So today we're continuing to work on chapter nine, lesson 9.1. And in these examples, our goal would be to learn how to find the missing vertex of a polygon in the coordinate plane. So I talked to students about being a sleuth, a detective, and we're gonna try to find that missing information, that missing piece that will turn whatever we're given into a completed polygon. If you take a look, just a friendly reminder that whenever we're looking at math and focus, our directions are given in bold print. So this is what they'd like us to accomplish or do. Use graph paper. I inserted some for us here. Plot the points on a coordinate plane and answer each, e and answer each question. Easy for me to say. If you notice, this is problem number 14. It's just taken from our book examples. So I just grabbed this from Math and Focus, something you could also do online if you're looking at our textbook pages. And find some follow-up problems, some similar things if you'd like. Part A. Let's plot the points A, C, and D on a coordinate plane. Well, I do know how to plot points. I'm really going to use this idea of X before Y, meaning move right or left before I move up or down on the coordinate plane. So if I look for point A, I can always start safely here at the origin, where the X and the Y axis intersect. And negative 6 tells me first to move towards the negatives, move left. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. Here we are. But the next number here tells me positive 5. So I need to move up with that Y term, that Y coordinate. So we'll move up 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here's my point, and all good points get a label or an identity, so we'll call this point A. It might be a good time just to remind you that um, on this coordinate plane, whenever I move from the origin towards the right on my x-axis, I'm actually moving towards the positive numbers. If I decide to move instead to the left on my x-axis, I'm approaching negative numbers. And this is always where we move first. It's always to the right, to the right, or to the left, to the left, before we move up or down. Let's just review. When I'm moving on the y-axis, if I move above this x-axis, or I move up, if you will, I'm heading towards positive numbers, just like on a vertical number line. And everywhere, if I were to move down here, I can see I don't have space to show you all of that. Um, I would be heading towards the negative numbers. So there would be negatives down here, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and so on. All right, point A all set. We could check that off. And next I'm looking for point C. Well, it says it's located at positive 5, positive 1. So the first positive number goes with, you guessed it, the x-axis. Let's go 5 to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We always run before we can jump, so we ran 5 to the right. And I'm now going to jump, but it's kind of a small jump. I'm only jumping 1. And again, positive numbers go upwards on the y-axis. So here I am at 5, 1. Let's go ahead and give him his name, his identity. This is point C. We're doing pretty well here, but I have one more point. I see point D. It says 5, 5, and I need to locate that and plot this point on the coordinate plane. So if I start here again at the origin, that first number 5 is positive. It tells me move right, run right, 2, 3, 4, 5. And it also says I get to jump. This time I'm jumping a little bit higher, aren't I? I'm jumping up 5. One, two, three, four, five. Here we are, and we call this point D. His name, his identity, all set. Well, we actually have done what part A asked for. Oftentimes, I'll keep track just by checking it off. So this is partial points. When we go to take a quiz, when you have to apply yourself on an assignment, at least try bits and pieces to get yourself moving towards mastery. Part B. Here it talks about a figure. They're talking about a polygon that I want to make. Figure. A, B, C, D. I notice there are four points in this polygon, and it's going to make a rectangle. Plot point B and give its coordinates. Well, this is the second part. So first I'm trying to figure out a rectangle. I'm going to have to find point B, so that's kind of like part A, or the first part of the problem. And then when I'm done, I'm going to have to give its coordinates. It's kind of the second piece. I want to make sure I do both parts. All right, well, if you notice, this order that's given for the name of the rectangle A, B, C, D implies that A is connected to B, is connected to C, is connected to D, and D, if you remember, will kind of spiral back. He's going to close the shape off by connecting to A. So what can I connect here? Well, I don't have anything to connect to A in this moment. No B that I see. I mean, no B on the coordinate plane. There we go. Um, but I do notice that C and D are supposed to be connected. And it also says, if you look, 
when I close this figure, I have to go back to its start. So that would really mean D connects to A. Not too bad. And in fact, I can see here, it almost looks like half of a rectangle. If only there was a piece down below. I really need another edge here, maybe a base. And while I have the right side, it looks like if I could close in the left side here somehow, I'd have a nice rectangle. So let's figure out where that point should be. There are a couple ways to do that, but maybe the safest way, instead of just guessing and going, uh, not quite right, uh, kind of close, mm, I know it's somewhere over here, it might be better to do something that's really thought through. It might be better to say, if I know this side over here represents one, two, three, four units, four jumps, Shouldn't the opposite side be the same? On rectangles, aren't opposite pairs congruent? They are. So we're going to count one, two, three, four jumps. And we're going to put our new improved point here. We're going to call this point B, that missing point. And you do want to double check. So usually we are working in pencil, so we can do some quick erasing. If I were to connect these, would this actually, in fact, make polygon A, B, C, D a rectangle? Does it look to you as if opposite pairs are equivalent or congruent and opposite sides are also parallel? Yes, we've done a good job. So we found the missing point. We need to give it coordinates. So here we'd say point B and where it's located. Well, remember all points get two coordinates, an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. So we want to get over here to point B somehow. If we were starting at our origin, we'd have to move backwards towards those negative numbers, wouldn't we? So I'm going to count how many jumps backwards I'm taking. One, two, three, four, five, six. But remember, I'm moving backwards. So backwards tells me make it a negative six. Negative six comes first. Well, next I needed to move above the x-axis. How many jumps or steps did I have to take to move to this point B? The answer would be one. And when we move up on the y-axis, it really requires we're heading towards those positive numbers. So that one should stay positive. Part B seems to be all set. Let's take a look at another one here. Part C, they asked me to do something different with this. They say that figure A, C, D, and E, A, C, D, E in this order, is gonna be a parallelogram. Well, this is where I asked my sleuths to turn into bakers. It's kinda like we're gonna have to layer another shape right on the same coordinate plane. I kinda wish they didn't do that, but it's something that we can show. So A, C, D, and E want to be connected in this order. Well, first I heard A to C. So if you have a straight edge, it might be a good idea to try that. I don't have one of those at this moment, so I'm just shooting for the best I can. A to C. Then notice it says C to D. So I'll use a different color here, so hopefully it stands out to you. I'm using blue for this part of the problem. And next it says I need point E to try to make a parallelogram. Well, I don't see a point E. So if you read on, it would tell you plot point E, and it needs to be above AD, meaning it needs to be somewhere up here. And if you look at my quadrants, my choices are quadrant one over here, quadrant one, or quadrant two to the left. Hmm, it's gonna be somewhere up here for sure. All right, so above AD. I just thought about my quadrants, so really I've taken care of this piece. I might even say to myself, okay, quadrant one or quadrant two. And last but not least, it says give the coordinates. So. If you take a look, there are a couple parts to deal with here. Part A means I'm missing a point, a vertex. Part B says I need to find its coordinates. So to do that, this one's a little bit trickier than the last shape. The last shape was a rectangle. We only had to count straight up the height, if you will, of our rectangle, or just one side. This one's a little bit tricky because if I look at the base, it's kind of tilted. It's a diagonal, isn't it? So I kind of want to do that same idea to make a diagonal up above line segment AD. It has to go somewhere up here I'm picturing. So to do that, I want to do some measurements, some counting. I'll use a different color here so we can do some counting. Well, if we take a look, we already counted here a minute ago. We knew how tall the shape was, right? It's one, two, three, four units high. Would it be true in a parallelogram that the other side should have the same height? Yes, in fact it is. So I guess another way of getting there would be to count one, two, three, four points on the opposite side of the shape or on the other vertex which represents the base or is part of this line segment. Go to the opposite side of it and we count up from it four. 
to me like we might have a point sitting right here. Probably should change that to be blue because again we're working in blue for this part portion of part C. And we would call this point, let me look back, point E. This is point E of my shape. We do want to do a double check and make sure that this point will work out. I go ahead and measure here. Connect the dots. I want to make sure that it looks as if it creates a parallelogram. Opposite sides are parallel and not necessarily at 90 degrees. My angles can be off from that, can't they? As long as we say this pair of lines are parallel, they'll never intersect if I continue them in one direction or the other. And this set, uh, AE, seems to be parallel to CD, doesn't it? So I'll just show that it's a different length and it's a different set of parallels. So for that reason, we should go with two arrows instead. Okay, I think I found it. So that wasn't quite as tricky as I was picturing. Another way to do that might have been to count across here how many jumps to get back to this vert vertical line and how many jumps to move up to point A. We could have done the same thing from D, moving back to A, how many jumps, and then moving up those four steps again. All right, well, let's go ahead and say what we found. Point E needs some coordinates. It needs two pieces, an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. So if I go back to my original axes, my x and my y, I would first start here at the origin and move backwards. One, two, three, four, five, six. But remember, you're moving backwards. It looks like you're heading towards the negative numbers. So if that's true, it's not just six. It has to be a negative six. Well, that's a good start. That got me all the way here from my origin, all the way back here. But remember, I'm trying to get up here to the top of my polygon. I'm trying to move up there to E. So we'll count how many intervals, jumps, or steps it takes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Looks like it takes nine. Now let's just make sure. Was I heading up or down when I was talking about that nine? Oh, I was heading up on the y-axis. Remember, that means we're heading towards the positive numbers. This looks like a final answer for part C. Again, just to highlight the two pieces, we were able to find a missing vertex for both a rectangle, which is considered a polygon, and a parallelogram, which is considered a polygon. So that was our goal for today.